all over Europe, instant payments reach continues to grow rapidly. Banks and other service providers have been multiplying their efforts to roll out real-time payment products to their customers, and end-user adoption is on the rise. The new pan-European request to pay scheme and the infrastructure solutions based on it are expected to further accelerate this uptake. Request to pay is seen as a game changer by many payment experts. It will enable banks in the broader ecosystem to further leverage their real-time processing and reporting capabilities. With the help of Request to Pay, they'll be able to create additional value around payments for the benefit of their customers. Welcome to the EBA Clearing Session with the Request to Pay into the Future. In this session, we would like to give you some outlook about uh, what are the plans of Request to Pay of few of our funding institutions and panelists, and also what is the pickup of instant payments in their communities. Together with Hayes Little John, the CEO of EBA Clearing, we will give you also an outlook about where EBA stands in the Request to Pay project. Hayes. Do you want to start and uh, give us an introduction about the project and the achievements so far? Yeah, good afternoon, Katia. Uh, yes, let me give a brief overview about the update on RT1 and uh, the project of R2P. RT1 currently extends reach to nearly 2,600 uh, addressable PSPs through 69 participants from 24 countries. This represents close to full reach amongst the SCT instant adhered PSPs. It's important to remember it's still an optional scheme, but in most countries, we've already reached the established critical mass. And in the coming weeks, we'll be adding banks from Belgium and Luxembourg, which will also mean that those two countries will have reached a critical mass uh, for instant payments through RT1. Uh, to put the reach numbers a bit in perspective, let me point out the following. If the PSPs in RT1 were to turn all of their SCT payments into SCT INS transactions, this would translate into a migration of close to 80% of the traffic we have in SCT uh, today on step two. As things are, the RT1 system currently processes around 1 million transactions a day with peaks well over that and performance is really great. Average processing time is below one and a half seconds end to end across all corners of Europe. Preparations are ongoing for further uh, to further enrich the tips instructing party functionality. And in 2021, our users will be able to rely on RT1 to manage different uh, SCT INS flows. And by providing them a single view on their transaction flows and a single place to reconcile and manage their positions, we're striving to help our users comply with the new tips requirements whilst minimizing investment related expenses and complexity. So much for the development of RT1. Let me add a few words to R2P or request to pay um, as we know it. The technical implementation of our pan-European messaging service for request to pay will be completed at the end of this month in line with our plan and according to our track record also uh, in time and in budget. A number of early movers are already preparing to join the service and we very much look forward to welcoming these new participants as soon as the EPC scheme is launched and comes into effect. Thank you for that introduction, Hayes. Um, now is the time uh, to introduce also our panelists. So I'm happy to welcome here in this session uh, the participants from few of our funding institutions. That is James Barkley of JP Morgan, Tanya Konrad of Erste Group Bank, Christoph Hoffmann of Deutsche Bank and Raoul Soci of BBVA. Before we start with the request to pay discussion and your plans here, I would like to come uh, shortly to the topic of pickup of instant payments in your local communities. Um, and here I would like to start with the Spanish community since it was the one which um, introduced instant payment at the very first day of the EPC scheme in November 2017. Raul, you do have an exciting story for us to share on the pickup of person-to-person -person service based on instant payment. I would like to share with you uh, the success of Bizum in Spain. Bizum is a payment solution that allows real-time transfer account to account. The majority of Spanish banks have integrated Bizum to their apps 
and it's really easy to use. You don't need to know the, the account number, just the phone number, or maybe select it from your for agenda. And two seconds after, the, the fund is in the beneficiary account. There are two other uses cases of for BISU. The first one is donation. And there is more than 2,000 of NGOs that, have, that are receiving funds through BISUMs. The other use case is BISUM for merchants. Um, so instead of paying by card, you can use BISUM. In Spain, uh, currently, there is more than uh, 5,000 of establishments that are, are accepted uh, payments by BISUM. So currently, in BISUM, there are more than 12 million users. The, there is a new expression in Spain, uh, Aspium Bizum, and it's something like Domia Bizum, uh, and to tell someone to send you money to your account. This shows the tremendous uh, success of Bizums in Spain. Uh, thanks, Raul. The Spanish market has certainly benefited from the community's coordinated approach to instant payments. Tanya, your institution is very active in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, how has the role of instant payments been progressing in your region? And how have you seen different adoption speeds between Euro and non-Euro countries, or are there other differentiating factors? So, thank you, Hayes. Um, Erste Group Bank is one of the largest uh, banks within the Central Eastern Europe. We are having around 16 million customers in 2,200 branches and covering seven countries. Uh, since Erste Group Banking is implementing, uh, implemented the SEPA instant payments, we did observe the difference in adoptions between the non-Euro and Euro countries. Obviously, for the non-Euro countries, uh, SEPA instant was seen as a cross-border payment. So basically, their focus was primarily on the local instant solutions. For the non-Euro countries where the instant payments were mandatory schemes, we have observed quite a broad acceptance and as well big change in the customer experience, customer behavior. And the market in those countries pretty much picked up rather fast. For the other non-Euro countries where the, let's say, uh, local instant payments were driven mainly by the customer needs or the competition, we have observed that uh, the implementation is picking up and the volumes are picking up quite uh, nicely in the recent months. Uh, when we come to the Euro countries here, obviously there is a difference in the adoptions and the speed, especially when we look into the already established corridors uh, between Austria and the Central Eastern Europe. In particular, uh, if you look at the corridors, Austria and Germany or Austria and Italy. Um, here, the biggest momentum and the highest peak uh, was actually triggered with the um, increase of threshold. And the second thing that we observed within the uh, adoption was basically the possibility that the instant payments could be as well exchanged within the batch, uh, which was a high uh, benefit for our corporates. Thank you, Tanya. Um, both rich and consumer adoption are very important. And we just heard about that corridors and exchange are driving the um, pickup of instant payment. But the development of a compelling proposition for corporates is uh, uh, as well a key. Christoph, uh, what uh, has your bank uh, done in this area and how your customers uh, reacting on that? What is the customers' uh, feedback on your efforts. Thank you very much, Petya. So we at Deutsche Bank clearly see an uh, enormous interest by corporates in instant payments, clearly not across all segments, but in particular when it comes to the direct consumer experience, which is impacted. So let's take, for example, insurance companies wanting to pay out claims via instant payments, but there's well many, many other examples. Um, if you think about a, a strong proposition from a bank perspective for corporates, you clearly need to provide slightly different features and functionalities. And that's something we at Deutsche Bank have focused on very much. Um, you need to be, for example, able to offer APIs, not only for the initiation of payments, but as well to allow for credit notifications, right? So on the incoming side, you want to be able to straight away recognize an incoming instant payment and be able to act on it, to ship goods or to provide services on that basis. But as well, what we see is that many corporates as well want to use instant payments in combination with the 
traditional bulk submission of payments. So basically sending payment files via host to host. And in that case, clearly, you need to be able to very flexibly handle the combination of instant payments and traditional SEPA payments to ensure that you don't see rechecks, which then need to be picked up by the corporate again. So really the combination of both allowing this flexible management and allowing a fully integrated approach is one of the key requirements of corporates in that space to ensure that while we are not yet at 100% reach with SEPA instant payments, you can still use it effectively for large payment files and in a corporate um, scenario. Thanks, Christoph. That's um, really interesting to hear how it's evolved in, in, at Deutsche Bank and also to see how the old and new mix uh, with the APIs and, and the really fast evolving customer needs. Um, James, how does the European instant payment uptake compare to what your institution sees around the globe? Do you see any specific advantages or disadvantages to the European approach? Okay. Th thank you, Hayes. Yes, uh, I'm James Barkley. I'm an industry product manager in wholesale payments for EMEA for JP Morgan. And, and, and whilst it's a great pleasure to be on this uh, remote session, I'm really looking forward to meeting up with my friends and colleagues in the EBA community sometime in the near future. I'm, I'm a little sad to say that I'm now in my second millennium working in payments, uh, but excited to say that this is the most interesting period of payments uh, that there's been since I've started working in the industry. And just to give you an idea of how, how exciting that actually is in the real, in the real time world, uh, before the pandemic, I was watching uh, a US primetime TV series called Madam Secretary. Uh, which is actually a, a great pre-pandemic dramatization of 10 years of the US Secretaries of State managing foreign affairs. It covered tensions in relationships between Russia, China, Europe and South America, kidnappings, terrorist attacks, simulated nuclear strikes, stone and warheads, etc. But then came the key moment in the whole series when Elizabeth McCourt, who's the Secretary of State, steps into the Oval Office and says, Mr. President, we found the criminals who've stolen the warhead. The President replies, excellent, how did you do it? And she says, using the SWIFT GPI track and trace mechanism and JP Morgan's interbank information network on the DLT, we got straight through to the initiating party through the originating bank. And I hate to say it, but this was almost heaven for a payments geek like myself. Now, request to pay is one concrete example of innovation amongst the range of development to the front end customer and interbank space in a world where the payments industry is moving forwards at a national, regional and cross-border level with real-time payments. And we're dealing with open banking and API access to third parties, offering new customer experiences. We've got the CPMI FSB driving for enhanced cross-border payments. Your central banks looking to introduce wholesale and retail digital currencies and a new legislative environment for stable coins and crypto assets. As well as in the instant payments and real-time payments world, the European Commission and ECB driving for pan-European solutions and sovereignty over European payment platforms. That on a global level is complemented by SWIFT GPI, as I was mentioning, and the upcoming transaction management platform and the general migration of FMIs to the ISO standards, as well as individual banks developments such as the link, which is the new IIN service of JP Morgan. But maybe on a collaborative level, the real icing on the cake in this fast evolving environment is the rest request to pay service and the ability that will offer to customers to initiate payments in Euro through EBA Clearing's request to pay solution. And, it, and if you ask the question, why can R2P be so beneficial to customers, both at a wholesale and consumer level, I'd like to give a sort of visual image, though I'm not, there's no pun particularly intended, and that would be a, on a flat screen TV. As some of you may know, the first of these screens were developed in 1964 by scientists in the University of Illinois, but it was only in 2006 with technology advancements in the introduction of LCD, which allowed for 50 inch screens that they became more palatable for the public. And although it took a few more years for them to become affordable, they're now more or less the norm in every household and every hotel room you happen to go. But of course, around this, flat screen teens, whilst they're now for TV and connected to the internet, they are not the only device that enables this to happen. We have 
smartphones, tablets, laptops, and even desktop computers uh, for access to the different medias. In fact, my kids can be on three of them at the same time, and I have to convince, commit, uh, I have to admit that I watched Madam Secretary on my laptop rather than the flat top TV. But whilst RTB will offer new and innovative solutions, it won't be the only payment initiation mechanism. We'll still have direct debits, card payments, standing orders, uh, and they'll be in place for many years. But RTB does have that great advantage of meeting multiple use cases with a wide range of benefits and also provides an additional layer of security and push payments and an alternative to online card transactions and a different approach to direct debits for those people who are used to authorizing and conducting their life online on a smartphone. But if I can pick up uh, more specifically on Hayes' question on how does the European instant payment update compare to what we see around the globe? Well, globally as a firm, we're, we're fully supportive of the move towards 24-7 real-time payments and see increasing interest from our corporate clients for payables and receivables uh, with volumes glowing for clients that are connected to Euro instant payment services and other customers increasing interest. Uh, we're seeing a good regional uptake at the Euro level although we expect this to be progressive rather than fast, and the introduction of R2P should help that interest increase. Uh, this, all, this all fits into the firm's sort of global positioning as we're developing a, a European single legal entity with 20 to 25 billion capital um, in, in, the European, uh, in the European market. Uh, and the instant services we can build as other institutions can on their sort of, sort of fortress platform and a fortress balance sheet uh, which has seen, even through this pandemic, the ability for firms like ourselves to process higher volumes and values of transactions um, through the last nine months. And part of this is, is made possible through uh, significant annual spend in technology. I mean, we're spending something in the region of $12 billion, which does include and is required scale investments in real-time payment solutions. Uh, and the firm was actually the first to offer real-time payments in dollars, pounds, and euros at the same time. And on a global positioning on, on instant payment world, we currently process something in the region of 300,000 real-time payments per day, uh, which with the figures that Hayes was giving earlier on, on the RT1 or the RT1 volumes is, is a significant amount, even if it doesn't compare with the overall uh, number of transactions processed. Uh, but RTP goes together with our focus on, on innovative customer solutions, which whether they're building out API connections or new in, in information networks. And the technology that we have in place and has been developed centrally uh, will allow our customers to benefit from that as they move progressively to their flat TV screen on the wall. And one great advantage in Europe is the delivery of the pan-European RTP service for Euro, offers a harmonized approach across the Europe across the European region and a solution that our customers can benefit in a similar manner. Thank you, James. I'm very happy that uh, in a couple of weeks from now, um, request to pay will move from fiction to reality. And um, you say that the request to pay is a missing piece of the puzzle for a number of uh, value added services and customer propositions to be built on that. So, is pan-European request to pay approach of interest for the Spanish community, given the fact that you um, operate the domestic infrastructure? Yes, um, Iberpay, the Spanish national clearing system, is recently uh, exceeded the record number of a million of immediate payments per day. That represents more than 28% of transfer in Spain. Uh, so we can consider um, th that there is a pretty good appetite for these services. But with the launch of the new request of pay services in 2021 and the connection with EBA clearing system, uh, we want to go further. These new services is considered a key element to increment the use of immediate payments and can be applied to a number of use cases, such as e-commerce, physical commerce, chargebacks, lottery, etc and offer some interesting advantages to the end users, like very easy and better way to control the of charges in account, provide certainty of payment to the beneficiary, facilitate the reconciliation and tracking of the payments. 
the launch of the new request to pay service will uh, represent a new milestone in the development of immediate payment in Spain, but also at a pan-European landscape, reinforcing our community as one of the most advanced and innovative in Europe. Let's drill a bit more into this pan-European aspect. Tanya, why do we need to request to pay to be pan-European and how will it make things easier or more difficult going forward? Thank you, Hayes. Um, we are in the economy which is, let's say, closely related to the trade and to the corridors, especially to the those uh, in the Austria and the Central Eastern Europe, where we expect that the payments initiation and the reconciliation are actually helping our customers and bringing them the value in that sense. Um, we need the concrete use cases based on which we are going to explore with the customers in terms of the value. Uh, we do look forward very much to what kind of developments request to pay is going to have in SEPA. Uh, based on our experience, which we had with the SEPA instant implementation, the pan-European solution is the most uh, proper way to go. Um, in particular, we believe that the pan-European solution is going to bring uh, clear benefit for the banks like us to find a solution and roll it out to the multiple countries especially in the timely and also in terms of efficient manners. And in that sense, um, I believe that uh, the request to pay as such is going to offer quite uh, concrete um, and quite significant uh, use cases, uh, which are going to bring the value and the benefit to our customers. And uh, how the market will pick up will basically depend on the concreteness of these use cases and the value that they are bringing to the customers. Well, we have heard that there are a lot of uh, um, initiatives to come, which uh, try to utilize uh, um, customer propositions. Christoph, how does request to pay tie in with the other European payment initiatives, such as the EPI? Thank you very much, Petya. Um, so, Request to pay, EBA clearing request to pay, first of all, perfectly complements existing open banking solutions in Europe. Um, we as Deutsche Bank are live with our open banking request to pay offering and integrating EBA clearing request to pay into the solution perfectly allows us to really allow for maximum reach for our clients and as well the best possible user experience. And it adds as well to our global request to pay proposition based on one harmonized platform to really allow corporate clients to, to take the maximum use from there. This for request to pay this ability to exchange structured information ahead of the actual transaction is a key cornerstone there and really allows for many, many more um, good use cases for our clients, both in the B2C, but as well in the B2B space. Um, Related to your question on the European Payment Initiative, um, their request to pay can clearly be a very important technical facilitator to allow this initiative to really take off and provide a new payment method and a new ability to exchange information between merchants and consumers. Thank you. Leveraging infrastructure investment and um, minimizing that investment is really are obviously very important aspects uh, coming back to the demand side, uh, James, where do you see the first use cases to be served with request to pay and do you think request to pay could play a global role? Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. As a firm, we see a specific corporate interest at the current time in e-commerce purchases with the pay now functionality and in invoice payments using a sort of pay later mechanism, which is inbuilt into the request to pay solution. And what, what was particularly interesting in when I joined the, the working group when it kicked off EPA clearing was listening to how every one of the representatives in the group saw use cases for a request to pay, whether that was on the consumer side or on the wholesale side. And I think as we work through what these opportunities are, we'll see that there are increasing number of different ways of using it, for example, for subscriptions and investment funds or for refund services. Uh, as all of these are attractive to our customers from a cost, speed and finality of payment perspective, as well as obviously easing their reconciliation issues. Um, on, on the global side, um, in the short term, I think it'll be good for us to demonstrate in Europe that we can make this work. 
and that we can build it out across countries under a single currency with a harmonized set of standards that allow us to offer a similar level of service to our corporates wherever they're active within the European Union. Um, on the cross-border global side, there's still an awful lot of work to be done on enhancing cross-border payments, uh, bringing them into a sort of more usual domestic instant payment environment, uh, even as that ramps up across Europe with uh, the help and drive of the European Commission of the European Central Bank. But assuming uh, requested pay meets the customer expectations and we are able to build on the reach that is being driven through RT1 and SEP, for instance, um, provided they get guarantee of payment, provided there's recognition that there are benefits of using this as a payment initiation method uh, from their customers. I expect that it will, will act as a very good role model for what the rest of the world could actually deliver in the real time, in the request to pay world. Um, and I expect to see progressive and good take up in Europe and then uh, subsequently elsewhere in the world. That sounds as a very promising outlook. Thank you everybody for the exciting and very interesting um, opinions on the request to pay. I hope for our um, visitors that that provides a very good insights of the different aspects how our funding institutions are going to use request to pay uh, in their plan. And um, yes, I would like to thank you for your contribution today. Hey, do you have any final words from your side? Uh, yes, I do, Petya. Um, and thanks very much for your part in, in our, our panel today as well. Um, it, hardly a day goes by also where in my personal life, I don't start seeing new use cases for request to pay. Uh, and just the other day, I made a payment to standing order that went wrong, and I wish I had to request a pay because then the change to settlement instructions would have worked a little bit better. But that's uh, future music, and I really look forward to the day when we can uh, have this in place across all of Europe. Um, and thank you also, everyone out there, for joining us. Thanks to our other panelists. Um, please stay tuned for a minute or so. Um, we're going to use the outro part of this session to introduce you to a, a new interactive map with RT1 statistics and request to pay R2P testimonials that we have just launched to better visualize progress in these important areas. So thank you and goodbye. If you are eager to learn more about instant payment developments in Europe, check out our new interactive map. It shows how RT1 reach has evolved across SEPA and in each country individually since the go live of the system in November 2017. RT1 reach is compared to Step 2 SCT reach, both in terms of number of PSPs and in terms of volume share these PSPs account for. The map also features videos of payment experts telling you what their institutions or their communities are planning to do with the new R2P service of EBA clearing. We will keep populating the map with updated statistics and additional testimonials as the ramp-up of instant payments and request-to-pay services continues. So please, come back for more.